Hi everybody, Scott Hards again from Hobby Link Japan and we're back for round five of Boss Builds where we're fiddling around with this new Yacht Tiger kit from Blitz by Takom. Uh, as you saw in our last episode, we got a lot of the little detail parts put together that go onto the top hull, but we still have a lot more to do. We're going to work on those during this episode today. Uh, but one of the big differences on what we have to do today is that it involves a kind of part that some folks may not have worked with before, and that's photo etched metal parts. Uh, some people just call them PE, uh, which stands of course for photo etched, but what this is is primarily a piece of brass uh, that is used to model some of the finer details uh, of the kit, as you can see here. Now the reason they do this, as you can probably figure out, is to get the details so tiny and so fine, if they were to do this in plastic parts, it would be so fragile that if you barely touched it, you'd just be breaking it all the time. So in order to add strength to the parts, the only choice they have is to make it in metal, which is this photo etched brass. It's called photo etched, by the way, because they project an image onto a plate that can register the light that shines on it and then a special chemical, a type of acid is used to actually eat away uh, the parts of the uh, metal that they do not use. So this is actually been in an acid bath. It's kind of interesting the way they make these. Very simple, a simplified version of how they make them, but uh, perhaps someday we could show you how that's done. Uh, but yeah, photo etch parts, which are used very often on ship kits and on tank kits for uh, some of the finer details, take a little bit of a, a different handling technique, of course, because they're metal, uh, and also because the regular types of plastic cement, of course, are not going to work on these, because plastic cement works by slightly softening or melting the plastic so that like a weld, the two surfaces can, can adhere together, but it's not going to touch uh, the photo etch. So we have to see how we're going to go about gluing those on, and I'll teach you the basics of handling photo etch parts in today's episode. Let's get started. Okay, we're getting ready to dive in here. Now, before we get to the photo etch parts though, as you can see, we've still got tons of little bits that we've got to put onto the uh, top hull here. Uh, so let's get busy on that, shall we? We get to start with the Bosch light, or the, the light. Tanks had headlights, just one actually, and we have a little assembly here that we need to do. So off we go. And there we have it, one completed Bosch light assembly. Now this is going to mount right onto the front of the hull here. Let's let him dry for a few minutes before we do that, however. All right. We're getting into some macro photography here, but if you can see that, that's the little guy I just put out. Did a human finger for scale there. <laughs> okay, while we were doing that, I think our Bosch light part has uh, set up pretty well here. So we'll go ahead and attach that. There we go. Looking good. We have Goodness, so uh, a dozen tiny little bits that we need to put on the tank here. So we'll get going on that. Okay, so we have completed one of the clusters of these little bitty parts here uh, that we're going to be putting on for the, uh, the track links, the spare track links that are stored on the sides of the tank. And now we've got the second cluster of track brackets done as well. So we've finished all of them that are going on this side of the tank. So that means we've only got two more parts uh, to do in on this side of the, the detail of the hull. And that's some long skinny brackets, which are, are not brackets, but pole-like uh, units here, which I'm honestly not exactly sure what they are. but. Off we go. Now we got that on. Now all the detailed parts on this side of the hull are now complete. So we are going to set this aside and let it dry before we continue with uh, any of the other parts because we don't want to mess up any of the delicate work that we've already done while the glue is still soft. Okay, got all the parts off the runner. Trim the excess bits here. All right, we've got some hatch work left to do as well uh, on this. So we're going to mark off the tracks done in step 13. And let's do it. Let's do the axe. Yeah. All right. Got the axe. Now we have some hatches that we need to attach. 
And before the hatches go on the tank, we get to put some cute little handles on the hatches themselves. Now I'm thinking maybe we're gonna wanna put the hatches on the tank before we put the uh, handle on the hatch because that way when we're positioning the, the hatch on the tank, we won't have to worry about possibly knocking over the little handle that we've just attached. So we're gonna go ahead and put the hatch on the tank first. If I'm not mistaken, the kit says that you can position the hatches open and closed or closed, I mean, uh, although they don't, they're not workable, you could theoretically position this off to the side like this and glue it in position like that. Perhaps have it all the way open if you wanted to have a figure coming out of there, but that's entirely up to you. I am not going to be using any figures. I'm just gonna do the vehicle. So we'll just glue that down into the normal position there. Now we need to go get two C8 handles to put on them. And that is these little guys right here. You know, these parts are also very thin, so can't put too much pressure on them. Not too bad, not too bad. It looks really good, this level of detail. It's a lot of work. Sometimes a little bit frustrating if you drop things or have to keep redoing it. But man, it looks so realistic when you get these little parts into position. So I've identified all the spots where it's going to connect. It's all these spots on the side of the tank where you have slight indentations left here. All of these are where the cable is going to touch the surface. So we need to put some glue on each of those. I'm going to go with the uh, traditional Tamiya cement for this one. Actually, on second thought, I'm not going to. We'll go with the extra thin. All things considered, that went pretty smoothly. Okay, now that uh, we've given the parts on uh, this side of the tank time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set in place the extra links that we made. Now, uh, these links, uh, you can glue them in place if you want, but for the uh, purposes of painting later, I'm just going to set them into place on the, on the clamps as they would have been if they were on a real tank. So uh, these little clamps actually work like clamps. And there we are. Now for what it's worth, one of the differences between the early version and late version of the tank is I guess they were having lots of problems with uh, the tracks on the Yachtiger. So on the late version of the tank, there's two more links uh, in the middle uh, on each, the, uh, each side of the hull. Anyhow, we're gonna leave that like that for now. And now we're gonna move on to the next step of assembly, which is the travel clamp for the barrel. Now this is the, uh, the thing that sticks up from the bow of the tank and holds the barrel in place while they are traveling over roads and stuff and not getting uh, you know ready to shoot. It uh, holds the barrel of the big gun in place so it's not bouncing all over the place and possibly damaging the breech or other parts of the assembly. Now you can build it here. As you can see, they've got the option uh, icon going. You can build it either in the open position or the closed position. So you could uh, model the tank as if it was getting ready to fire uh, or as if it was on the road and, and trying to get somewhere else. But, uh, you know, we want to perhaps invoke a sense of action. So I'm going to go with the, uh, the open position on the travel clamp as I build this now. So here's where we uh, make the choice. They've given us the parts here for the closed and the, the open one. And uh, I'm going to go for the open. Now you have to assemble these... Uh, binoculars so that uh, they're just peeking up through the hatch here and there's a little stay on the bottom of them that you attach off to the side of the hole in order to achieve that but it's not a particularly stable assembly and we don't want those to dry in the wrong position so we're gonna put those off to one side and make sure that they dry okay before we assemble them into the tank. It's looking pretty good for the moment though. So in the meantime, we have a couple more hatches we can do while we're waiting for those parts to dry. Now, this again is one of those parts where if you wanted to, uh, you could glue it into position in the open position just by putting it into this kind of a configuration here. You'll notice there's even 
Of course, detail on the inside of the hatch in case you decide to do that. But I'm going to go closed. So we're just going to put it into position here. Should just lay flat like that. So that's what we're going to go for. Now we have a very delicate part, which is, I believe, the electrical wiring for the Bosch light on the bow of the tank. Very delicate piece, so we're going to want to cut this with care. Yeah, it doesn't appear to connect to any specific hold points on the hull, but if you lay it in position, it's going to replicate the electrical wiring that's running from a fitting on the outside of the tank into the headlamp. So we'll do that now. now this will be a, uh, I think a good place to use the extra thin cement and rather than applying the cement to the part and then putting the part in position, I'm going to do it in the reverse order, put the part in position and then apply the cement. And again, the whole point of the extra thin cement uh, is that because it is so thin, capillary action will draw the cement into the gaps between the parts. So there we go. We now have a power cable running to our Bosch light. Okay, I think the uh, travel clamp has dried enough now that we can go ahead and install it. Now I've put the two little brackets on the, the bottom here and these fit over the pins rather nicely so they actually still rotate which uh, means that we could put this on and have it actually be movable uh, if I'm uh, really good with the glue when I put this on but uh, I don't know if I would actually want to play with the tank like that anyway so we're just going to go ahead and not worry about that too much as we put some cement into place here and now make sure in that position that the feet are down securely. Now we've got our travel clamp in position. So at long last we've made it to the step in the instructions where we're going to be working with photo etch parts. Now if you take a look uh, in the instruction seat uh, they have this this odd icon that they're using uh, here. It looks like a, a broken heart or a bleeding heart or something here. Uh, for some reason that's their icon for a photo etch part that requires a different kind of glue. So as I mentioned in the introduction to this video, um, if you've never worked with photo etch parts before, uh, they are metal. And on this particular kit, we have six, actually seven uh, grill pieces and then four little stays uh, that are made in the photo etch brass parts. And uh, again, this is repeating myself from the intro, but you can't use glue for plastic on these because it simply won't do anything because this works by slightly melting the plastic. Instead, for this, we're going to need to use instant cement. Uh, I'm going to be using this uh, particular Japanese brand uh, because that's what's available around here. Uh, but you can use any type of instant cement. Now, by instant cement... Uh, also known as CA uh, by some people, which is uh, stands for cyanoacrylate. So you want to use a cyanoacrylate type glue. Uh, in the United States, Crazy Glue is a big brand uh, of that type of glue, but you can get this, I'm pretty sure, just about anywhere. And you're going to want to use uh, the CA. Now, if you've never worked with CA before, you have to be aware uh, that it will stick your skin together really, really well uh, to the point that uh, you will tear your skin off attempting to get your fingers apart if you uh, glue yourself together with this stuff. So be really, really careful when you're working with cyanoacrylate glue that you do not glue yourself to yourself, uh, which is easier to do than it, uh, it sounds. Uh, and if you do uh, have a problem with this, either use nail polish remover uh, to dissolve the bond or use the uh, remover that they actually sell for cyanoacrylate glue, usually in exactly the same place that they sell the glue itself. So it may be a good idea to have a, a tube of that uh, remover around if you don't have nail polish remover available. Uh, but that's how you work with cyanoacrylate glue, and you only need tiny, tiny amounts of it. So uh, let's go ahead and, and get going here. Now, using these kinds of photo etch parts for the back deck grills on German tanks uh, is, you know, very, very, very common. Uh, German tanks, uh, like many tanks, had the engines in the bank and they back, and they had these big uh, openings on the back deck of the tank uh, so that the heat from the engine could escape uh, easily. But in order to, uh, you know, prevent things from falling in uh, to this area around the engine, they would have these fine mesh grills over the top of them. And it's kind of impossible to represent that in 
um, plastic parts because it's too fine. So they've gone and, and made the metal parts. Now these metal parts are made of brass and you may be wondering how to work with them. Note in the case of the Tacom kit here, and this is, uh, I've seen this on some other kits as well. Uh, sometimes they uh, have them protected in plastic and there's a, a film of plastic on here that you need to remove uh, before you can actually work with the parts. Um, it just depends on the manufacturer whether this is on there or not. There we go. Now, to cut out these metal parts, although this sounds uh, a little scary if you have a good pair of nippers, you can actually use the plastic nippers that you may have uh, in order to do this. Uh, the metal is so fine and so thin uh, that it will work just fine. But uh, if you don't want to risk uh, dulling your, your pair of nippers, and actually if you look very closely on this particular uh, part sprue or sheet, the gates that you need to cut are so small and so fine, for example there's one there, that you really can't fit the nippers uh, in to get that. So in order to make the cut uh, on these parts, Instead, we're going to use our hobby knife. So, yep, you can use a knife to cut metal. And we're going to start by cutting out one of these, these round grills here. And you just take your hobby knife and press it down on the gate and cuts right through it. There we go. It looks like they've got these connected at three points. And you carefully just push it down and cut them. And there we go. Now we have this nifty little grill here. Now we're going to go ahead and put it on the tank. And obviously this is going to go here. Now you can see, actually, if you look closely, that I've, I've got a little bit of uh, excess or, or flash sticking off here uh, from the, uh, the gate or the joint there. So I'm going to just go ahead and trim that off with my, my plastic nippers here. In my personal opinion, you probably don't want to use like a file uh, to do these because the metal is so fine it's really easy to bend it and if you apply something with a, a lot of power behind it you could easily bend it but I think I've got it pretty clean there now I'm using a, a type of CA glue here that has an applicator that allows you to put a very small amount on at one time which I find very convenient for modeling um, be careful when you use a CA straight from the tube because depending on what type of packaging the brand you're using is in, uh, you could just put a whole bunch of glue on the kit or uh, inadvertently, and you don't want to do that, of course. So if you have a non-precision uh, bottle or, or tube of glue, in fact, I happen to have one handy. This is a, a very cheap Japanese brand of CA glue here, and it just comes in a simple tube. Something like this, you're just going to have a hole on the end that glue pours out of. So for uh, a package like that, if you were going to go ahead and apply the glue, instead of trying to go straight from the, uh, the package onto the model, I would recommend that you put a drop or two of glue just on a piece of paper that you can throw away later, and then take a toothpick or something else very, very fine, dip that in the drop of glue on the piece of paper, and then apply that to the model you're working on. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use this applicator uh, that this, uh, this particular glue brand has provided. Put a couple dots of glue on the uh, center area here. And a few dots around the outside. And give it some points of adhesion. Now again, as I mentioned, you will glue your fingers really well with this. So you're not going to want to use your fingertip to press the part into place because I can guarantee you, you will regret it. Instead, we're going to use our trusty tweezers here. Grab that. Just set the part in place, easy enough, and press it down where it needs to go. And looks like it's adhering pretty well already. Wow, I almost inadvertently pulled it off there, but the glue bond was so strong already that it wasn't going anywhere. So yeah, they call this instant cement for a reason. Looks like I need maybe another little bit on that corner there. And there you have it. Our first grill is in place. Now we have, as you can see, uh, five more to go here, actually six, because there's one that's going to go there. 
and then we have four little stays that are going to go on somewhere else. But the technique that we're using uh, to do it is going to be absolutely the same for all of those. So uh, again, you just need to be uh, careful not to get this glue on your fingers. Uh, bad things will happen if you do that. Uh, again, obviously you need to use cyanoacrylate glue uh, when you do it. And to cut parts out, either use a nice sharp hobby knife, uh, or if the shape of the parts permits, go ahead and use your nippers. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, you can uh, cut them out any way you want, but uh, again, uh, you need to make sure that you probably use the knife because the nippers could be dulled if they're cutting a lot of metal parts. Now, speaking of cutting, one other thing to be aware of when using photo etch parts is the parts themselves are so thin uh, that sometimes if you rub your finger across them the wrong way, you can get a, a small cut. So be careful of that as well because it, it is almost like a, a dull knife uh, here. And particularly when you have made cuts yourself uh, to separate these pieces, uh, you can have some little jagged edges of metal sticking off that could uh, uh, injure you. So be careful when you're handling the metal parts. Be careful when you're handling the glue. And if you follow those rules, you should be just fine. All right, let's dive in and get some more of this done. So now you've seen how to go ahead and uh, put on these photo etch parts. It's really not very difficult at all, and they add a lot of great detail and realism to your kit. But as you can see here in the instructions for the Octeager, even after we've gone ahead and been able to put on these uh, photo etch grills, we still have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, like six more steps filled with little detail parts and hull assembly stuff. So we still have quite a ways to go yet to get all of these little detail parts onto the hull and to finish up the hull and make it all perfectly realistic uh, before we can go ahead and do the final assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in and get as much of the rest of this done as we can before the episode for next week. So I'm gonna dive in, get this done, and hope to see you all next week on our next episode of Boss Builds. Thanks for watching as always.